Hi friends and welcome to this video. Today I wanted to share with you some current favorites and I also wanted to share with you a couple of fails that I tried over the past uh, month and a half. And I wanted to film this video on the table here because I have products that have extraordinary texture and I think that this is going to allow me to show you better the products. So we are starting with complexion products. I have a few complexion products that I wanted to share with you and I have some favorites and a couple of fails that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to start with the favorites. So I wanted to share with you this new Dior Forever Glow Star Filter, which I reviewed initially when it was released. I have it in the shade Zero, which is my usual foundation shade. And this is a very interesting, very extraordinary product because initially when I tried it, I did not like it. It is like an illuminating base but it is a little bit thicker as you can probably see on my hand as I show you. It has a very thick consistency and it's almost like an illuminating base, like a light weight highlighter. It's almost like a lightweight highlighter has been mixed with foundation. As you can see, we have quite a lot of coverage on this product. And initially when I started using it, I was using it all over my face and I did not like it because it was emphasizing my, um, any of imperfection or pores. But once you understand how to use this product, I actually loved it and now it's my favorite. Now this product does not work on top of sunscreen. I only use it for in the evening when I create evening looks and a little goes a long way. So I use one third of a pump for my whole face and I just apply this product on the high points of my face. I just want to show you what a beautiful effect we can get if we use just a little bit of product. And I have a whole video where I show you with a close-up on my face how I like to use it in different ways and how you can use it. You can see this beautiful glow that it gives me and when I use this product I almost feel like a star. And once again this is not the kind of product that can be used on top of sunscreen. It's not your typical primer or base. I think that this is really a star filter for these times when you want to feel special, for these times when you want to attend a special occasion or in the evening you want to go out and you want to feel really um, amazing, beautiful. But there is a learning curve to use it, so only a little bit. Now I think that you can clearly see here on the camera how beautiful it looks, the luxurious sheen that it adds to my face. And I highly suggest you watching my video where I use this product on my face because you're going to see the actual difference that it makes on my face when used correctly. Other than that, See what happens when I start just blending the product on my arm. It turns into a glowy mess. So you have to use just a little bit. Next, we're moving on to another new release from Dior. And these are the new Glow Forever, Forever Glow Maximizers. And I love both of these. And my favorite one is the pink one. I have the colors pearly and pink. And the pearlescent one has more visible shimmers. You can see the applicator here. I just want to go ahead and swatch right here. Let's leave this. So this is the pearly and this one is the pink. Let me go ahead and close them. And these are absolutely beautiful highlighters that can be used under foundation, mixed with foundation, on top of foundation. It doesn't really have a learning curve because they have beautiful texture. Now my favorite one is probably the pink one, even though the pearlescent as well looks absolutely stunning, but it has tiny little glitters. So you can see here when I blend them and they add customizable glow to the face. So you can build up the glow if you want, or you can sheer it out and create this very natural soft look. Next, we're moving on to a powder and this is the Lumiere powder. It only comes in one color, which 
is a downside, I have to admit, but it is supposed to be a translucent powder. Right now it became my favorite because I started using it without foundation, just on top of my sunscreen, and it makes my skin look amazing. So this is not a completely flat matte powder. It has a little bit of luminosity, which is so beautiful and flattering on the face. And I don't think that the camera is going to catch actually the luminosity. I'm going to try and make a, a heavy swatch for you. Well, my this hand is a little bit stained with the highlighters. So I'm going to use my other finger. So I'm going to try and show you a close up. And as I rub it between my fingers, you can probably see here now what I'm talking about. So it has the tiny little bit of sheen, no shimmery particles. It does not shimmer, it doesn't have shimmery particles, but it has, it almost feels like silk. And when I apply this one all over my face, just on top of my sunscreen, that's how I like to use it. Sometimes I would use a little bit of concealer only under my eyes, but for all over my face, you can see that it does, so when you build it up, it does add a little bit of coverage, so it's not completely transparent. And I would say that it is the most, it gives me the most beautiful finish, and I find that it actually works really nice for the quality of my skin. And I really enjoy this one. I have been using it every single day, when I'm not filming a video, this is what I use every single day, just on top of my sunscreen with nothing else. And I have been loving the finish because it blurs my pores, imperfections, it blurs everything. But at the same time, it just gives me such a beautiful, no powdery look, no powder look. Moving on to the new Chanel Spring 2024 makeup collection. It is all about the mermaid glow and celebrating the ocean. And I love all three pieces that I have from this collection. I have the two eyeshadow palettes and the highlighter. Now let's start off with the eyeshadow palettes. These two eyeshadow palettes, initially when I was purchasing the eyeshadow palettes, I was absolutely sure that the Rivash eyeshadow palette is going to be my favorite, but now I'm not sure really. I just enjoy exploring my own creativity. I created already a couple of looks using these eyeshadow palettes, I believe a few looks, and I have more videos coming with these eyeshadow palettes. Um, I'm going to make sure to link all of the videos in the description box, but these are such fun, beautiful colors. The textures are also quite extraordinary. And I wanna show you this glittery shade here. It's just so lovely. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay too much attention to this collection because I have, and I'm going to have a few videos actually with this collection, but look how beautiful it looks. So the way I like to use this shimmery colors, this one, this one here and the highlighter, I like to dip my finger or just um, sponge applicator, but mostly this color I like to use with my finger and I like to press it against the skin and I get a very unique, beautiful finish. It is almost like pure light and I would say that the shimmers are even not visible. This is not visible as glitters. I want to swatch also the highlighter. I actually filmed a video, just filmed a video showing you how I like to use these products and different ways to use these products. So please go ahead and watch this video. Uh, as soon as I post the video, I'm going to have it in the description box. So I just wanted to show you the difference between this shimmery shade here, which is on my index finger, and then on my middle finger is the highlighter. This collection is very challenging to film because the colors are very interesting. And this highlighter here, when I apply it on my face, you're going to see in one of my videos, when I apply it on my face, it almost looks like um, a little bit of a pinkish, purplish color. And when I apply it all over my cheeks, it almost gives me lightly blushed color. Very interesting, very ethereal, mermaid-like glow, for real. And I found, 
what makes this color so extraordinary. I have been swatching it a lot during different times of the day and different lightings and it, this one looks different. So I'm gonna swatch it here and see if I'm going to get the effect now. But depending on how I turn my head and my arm on the swatch, it the color shifts from blue to purple. Let's see if we're going to get this effect now. If the camera is going to catch it. It only happens under under certain lighting and um, the other day I swatched it and I was looking at my arm in the mirror and when I was looking at my arm I was seeing the blue shift of color and in the mirror I was seeing the purple shift of color. So this is something quite extraordinary that Chanel haven't created until now and it's something that I don't have in my collection. And also I really like to layer different colors, for example this beautiful pink. Now these three colors can be used as blushes and I already showed that in a couple of my videos. I showed you how you can use the coral shades as blush and then the pink color as blush. These look beautiful as blushes as well. So this eyeshadow palette is quite versatile. Let me show you here the pink shade. And sometimes I like to add a little bit of this shimmery shade on top of the pink because the shimmers here have a little bit of this kind of a, almost like champagne beige shimmers. And I really enjoy when I mix and match colors here with this collection. Okay, so there we have it. I really like this color combination in particular because it reminds me a sunrise with this pink and then the shimmers on top. And this one doesn't look too shimmery. Like when you press these colors with your fingertip they are actually very wearable and without visible shimmer because sometimes somehow when you press the pigment the shimmers are not that visible but it just um, becomes pure light then we're moving on to two other favorite eyeshadow palettes and this one is Tisse Camellia by Chanel. This one, I had some difficulties to find this one because it was sold out everywhere but I was able to get my hands on this one. I'm going to show you a swatch now and then this one is Eclat de Nuit by Chanel. Again, these um, colors, I absolutely love the quality, quality of these eyeshadow palettes and I have been enjoying them a lot. Now let me go ahead and show you swatches. So this one is Tisse Camellia and I think that it's one of the most sophisticated eyeshadow palettes that I have in my collection. It's pure sophistication. And then the other one that you have seen I think a couple of times is Eclat de Nuit. It is um, one of the new eyeshadow palettes that was released from Chanel. I love both of these. Next we're moving on to a couple of blushes that I have been enjoying a lot lately. Apart from the um, eyeshadow palette Coral Treasure, which I love to use it as a blush because the pink color and the corals look beautiful on the cheeks as well. These are two um, blushes that I love. One is Rose Poulard from Chanel's Le Beige Healthy Winter Glow Makeup Collection, which I believe is sold out everywhere by now. And the other one is Dior Dan Sante, and it's actually the same shade as the nail color that I wear. Again, my nail color is in the same shade. This is a nude blush and it's not visible. I can't really swatch it for you because it doesn't doesn't really show beautiful on swatches, but it looks beautiful on my face. Let me go ahead and swatch also Rose Polar. Next, I have a lot of lipstick favorites, but I only picked four that I'm going to show you because these are the ones that I 
use most often. Now my current favorite is by Prada and this is the soft matte lipstick. I haven't tried the hyper matte lipsticks because I have sensitive lips and the thought of a hyper matte lipstick somehow makes, makes me nervous. So this is the color blush and it's the perfect everyday color. It's like my lips but better kind of color and uh, this matte color is actually quite extraordinary because it's non-drying and it gives a very soft focus effect on the lips so I really love it. I ordered two more colors and this one can be used on the cheeks as a blush as well. This is the perfect everyday color for healthy looking lips and I have been using it every single day since I got this color. It's really really beautiful and it looks gorgeous on the cheeks applied as a blush. The next favorite is from Dior. This is 429 Rose Blues and this is a very extraordinary color. It is a little bit dark for my skin tone but I like to apply it very lightly and let me go ahead and swatch it. This is one of the most extraordinary lip colors in my collection and I already reviewed the new reformulated Dior lipsticks. I think that the reformulation was very very successful because this new velvet, the velvets are my favorite because they literally blur the lines on the lips and I highly recommend you trying the Dior lipsticks because in the past they were not something that special. Right now I think that they did um, incredibly beautiful formula. So this one is the one color that stands out to me. I have five more colors and I ordered four more. So you can imagine how much I love them. Next we're moving on to one of my all-time favorite Rouge Coco Flash Lipsticks from Chanel and this one is perfect for the spring season. 118 Freeze. It's this. It's um, very pretty blush pink color, the color of healthy looking lips. I love this color and I have been repurchasing this one for years because I go through this one quite quickly. I use it instead of a lip balm. It keeps my lips moisturized. I really love it. And then my favorite Rouge Coco Balm. This one is exactly the color of my lips but better. For me personally this is the perfect nude color. It always makes me look so healthy. I don't think that I'm going to get a good swatch because still this is a lip balm and for some reason it just looks beautiful on my lips but not when I swatch it. And I have been wearing this color in a lot of my videos. I'm actually going to link to a video where I showed you my no makeup makeup look and I used this color so that you can see how it looks on my lips. But this is like my number one um, no makeup makeup kind of lipstick. When I want to do the no makeup makeup look I use this lip balm and it's quite long lasting for a lip balm. Okay so one last time these are the four colors that I decided to share with you. Next I wanted to drag your attention to this color because it used to be a limited edition holiday release from last year but I still see that it's available in the US and if you can Get your hands on this one. It is the most beautiful red nail color that I have had. This is my second bottle. I hope you're going to be able to see that it has this tiny little shimmers inside. It's not glittery or anything like that, but it's my most favorite red color. It's just such a beautiful, well-balanced red color. Let me go ahead and show you only here. Okay, there we have it. So it doesn't have glittery particles. And then I have two more nail colors that I wanted to show you. These are basically what you've seen me wearing um, in my latest videos, like in the past um, couple of months. You see me wearing these colors all the time. Right now I have the Sante, which is this one by Dior. And it's a beautiful neutral color and this one is the most gorgeous pink color. I'm actually halfway through this bottle. I will soon 
need to repurchase. This one is Ruban. You can see that I'm halfway through the bottle. And this color makes the nails look so healthy and beautiful, pretty. It gives me vibes of a ballet studio. Everything is so clean, so polished and gorgeous. Next, I wanted to share with you three skincare products that I have been enjoying a lot. One is the Hyaluronic Acid Serum from Aveen. This one has niacinamide and I'm halfway through this one. What I love about this serum is that it really helps to plump up fine lines and I like to use it in the morning. And of course, use some kind of a moisturizer on top of this one, but I really like to use it also under my eyes. I find it very useful for my under eye area and I have a little routine where I apply this one, then I apply a eye mask um, and I top it with a moisturizer and it really helps to plump up my fine lines. And when I'm tired, I find that it really helps to make my skin more plump. This is my favorite eye cream currently, and it is finishing and my heart is broken because this one is so expensive. And I lately bought makeup instead of this one. I should have repurchased this one because I had a discount at my Sephora. And I will have to repurchase this one because I really like how it works on my skin, on my under eye area. I think that it's a very good, it's very, very expensive, like all Guerlain products, but you guys know that I love Guerlain skincare, so I'm going to repurchase this one. It worked very nice on me. And then I have another very basic, inexpensive serum that I have been enjoying a lot, and this is the Bioderma Sensi Bio Defensive Serum. It is nice for sensitive skin and I like to use it when my skin is a little bit irritated usually and in the evenings. Sometimes I'm going to layer these two serums together. It's a really nice one for sensitive skin. I am actually finishing this one and I'm not going to get a backup because I'm trying now. I just purchased the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast B5 serum, which I'm going to try Again, it's a calming serum. I just took this out of my handbag and I almost forgot that this is, again, one of my favorite lip products because it was in my handbag. It's so pretty for the spring season. I'm going to swatch it here. It's a very beautiful candy pink color that I love for every day. And the reason why I didn't show this one in the first place is because I keep it in my handbag and it has to go back in my handbag. Now, usually one of these is going to be in my handbag because these are like my most used and favorite lip products. And next we are moving on to, I wanted to share with you an eyeliner. This is number 76, Broom Platine, which um, came out with the Chanel Les Nuits makeup collection. This is beautiful and especially I would like to recommend this to anyone who has blonde hair, fair skin tone. I think that this color is gorgeous. And then I have three brushes that have been irreplaceable for me. I'm going to start with these two, which I think you are seeing these brushes in all of my videos, but I just forget to mention to link them and I just forget to list them. For me, this is the perfect multitasking brush and I use it for everything. To apply powder strategically on my face, I use it for blush, for highlighter, for contour and for bronzer. This is like one of my irreplaceable brushes and I have a backup of this one. And then the other one, the one that you see me using in every video where I do my eyeshadow looks. As a lot of you know, I love very simple, quick eyeshadow looks most of the time, quite natural. And this brush is irreplaceable. This is again from Refra and it's number 33. I'm going to have these in the description box. And it's perfect because you can apply the color all over the eyelid and then use the same brush and define the crease because it is a flat brush. It's big enough to apply the color all over the eyelid, but at the same time, the shape of the brush allows you to get in the crease. So it's a perfect brush. 
and then this one this is with natural hair and I'm not really sure if this one is available because this one was sent to me by Refra for which I'm very grateful because it is absolutely irreplaceable for blush application for powder application any kind of powder is just applied so easily effortlessly with this brush I, I am going to need a backup of this one so I hope that they have it on sale now it was sent to me to test and i have fallen in love i cannot leave without this brush and it's so incredibly soft like this is the softest one of the softest brushes that i have ever tried so gentle to the skin so beautiful and last but not least i have four fragrances that i want to share with you one of them is new one this is the new miss dior parfum that was created by francis kirk john I have fallen in love with this perfume because it definitely, a lot of people were saying that this one is, was a dupe to Miss Dior Cherie. It is not a dupe to Miss Dior Cherie that a lot of people love. It's a beautiful bouquet of flowers. It has strawberry, which I think a lot of people find, a lot of people are reminded of Miss Dior Cherie. It definitely has um, some kind of a vibe of Miss Dior Cherie. I have been enjoying this one a lot and on my skin it almost gets a little bit of a gourmand vibe, a little bit of a gourmand scent approximately 30-40 minutes after applying this one to my skin, which is something that I enjoy. But I have to say that I also love the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum is more floral, whereas this one is, I think, a little bit more playful slightly more gourmand this one is um, the eau de parfum i find it to be more sophisticated i like both of them and i'm very happy that dior is not discontinuing the eau de parfum they are just adding this is a parfum and this is eau de parfum so i'm very happy that this one remains in the collection because it's one of my all-time favorite fragrances and one of the most sophisticated perfumes i think that is suitable for all occasions these are both excellent signature perfumes and can be worn any season, any time of the day. It is just the, the one fragrance that you can wear everywhere. And if you're interested in the new Miss Dior Parfum, please go ahead and check out my full review. I also shared with you a little bit information about the history of Miss Dior, which is very interesting. And then the other two favorite perfumes, I have been wearing a lot, La Vie Belle. So this is the original La Vie Belle Eau de Parfum, and this one is the... Eau de Parfum Intensement and you can see that I have quite a dent and now I ordered them for I believe around New Year's it was the end of December when I ordered them and I already have a dent here considering that I and I like to change my fragrances you can see how much I love these two they are very happy fragrances. Now, the original La Vie Belle, I think that everyone knows and everyone loves this beautiful praline note in the original La Vie Belle. It is one of the most sophisticated, beautiful, recognizable fragrances, but still, I don't really care that it's recognizable. There was a time when I was thinking, well, I'm not going to wear this because everyone else wears it, but... I don't think that we should care about how many people wear a fragrance because you add your unique twist to the fragrance. So I have been enjoying this one a lot. It makes me happy, so why not wear it and think that La Vie Belle, the life is beautiful. And this one is um, like the original La Vie Belle, but with this beautiful raspberry vanilla note. So this one is a little bit softer. It has more raspberry and vanilla and it's not as gourmand as this one. Like this one has bonbon praline, whereas this one has raspberry and vanilla and it's so captivating and gorgeous. And this is the Intensement version of the fragrance. Now I also have a couple of fails and that I wanted to share with you. Now the first one is going to be the new Caudalie Tinted Moisturizer. I shared with you that I'm going to test this one. I'm going to insert some footage of the product. I don't know if I've mentioned before, but I'm a huge fan of Caudalie and I was very excited to try this product. The reason why I decided to go to my local pharmacy to try it first instead of blind buying it was because the previous time, the previous tinted moisturizer that Caudalie had was too dark for me. Range. Right now at my local pharmacy, they only had three colors. 
I swatched all three of them so that you can see how they look, but I believe that there are five shades in total. It's just that most European countries are only get limited shades. But I would say that it was not a bad product. As you can see, when I rub it into my skin, when I rub it into my skin, it changes color, which we've seen so many of this kind of products. But what I didn't like is that it somehow feels a little bit thick and it feels it has some reflective particles. So it is illuminating. First of all, I really did not like the color range. And if a color, if a product does not, ma does not match my skin tone well, I find that I just don't use it. It's not a bad product, but it's not something that I would like to add to my collection. I have plenty of gorgeous tinted moisturizers that I enjoy using, and I just knew that this one was not special to me. It's not a bad product, but not really special to me. I also tried it on my face and did not like it because it doesn't do anything to blur imperfections. I only have to use a little bit, the smallest amount, so that it's going to have some kind of an illuminating effect, but I really did not think that I need to add this to my collection. I think that they could have done a better product. Next, I wanted to share with you that I tried the new Sisley foundation, and for some reason I, um, well, the the launch was delayed a lot here, so I thought that I'm just going to go ahead, get a sample and see how it's going to work. And I'm so happy that I did not purchase this product because it just does not perform well. Overall, I'm a huge fan of Sisley's foundations. I love a lot of them. I repurchased some of them, but this foundation, this new foundation is just not something that I want to add to my collection. It is not a horrible product, it's not a bad product, but it doesn't really do something for my skin. I find that I have to work a little bit harder to blend it, and after that it tends to emphasize and catch on dry patches, which is not perfect. And I am used to Sisley's complexion products being absolutely perfect and giving me this beautiful blurred effect, and this product just didn't do it for me. It is a medium coverage foundation, but it just doesn't blend beautifully into my skin, doesn't do something special to my skin. So last, I wanted to share with you a product that impressed me a lot and I wanted to add this to my collection, but unfortunately, Clarence never have a pale enough shade for me. So Clarence recently launched their tinted oleo serum and it is the most, one of the most beautiful products that I have tried. It is a light liquidy foundation, very moisturizing. I would suggest this one to people who have dry skin or dehydrated skin. It's like 80% skincare and I feel really sad that I cannot use this product. It's so incredibly gorgeous. And Clarence also have amazing tinted moisturizer, which is very very similar in terms of performance to the Sisley Phytohydrotan, but it's a fraction of the price. And again, it's so dark for me. I just cannot use these products. This is just so dark for me. And this is the shade number four, but I have swatched Clarence foundations many times and even the palest shade is usually at least two shades deeper than my skin tone. So if you're deeper than me, I think um, check it out because this is 80% skincare. They have incredible bases and the only downside here is the shade range. And that was all for today's video. Thank you so much for spending time with me and for watching. Let me know what are your favorite products right now. Do you have some favorites and some fails? Share with us in the comments. I always enjoy reading your comments and until next time, bye.